Hey everyone and happy spring! Come join me as I paint these cherry blossoms. In the description you'll find the inspiration photo and a downloadable line drawing that you can use for your own paintings just to help you along on the drawing process. So let's get started. I'm starting off with my Pebeo drawing gum. This is one of my favorite masking fluids. I've used other brands. Uh, what I like about this one is that because it's colored when it dries, I can see where I've placed it on my paper. And when I heat it up with a hair dryer to remove it, it removes really well without tearing my paper. I just rolled my brush in a bar of soap that protects my brush from getting all gummy and dried up and ruined by the masking fluid. I'm just taking a very inexpensive brush I'm just placing that masking fluid where I want to keep it white, where we're going to have lighter colors and highlights in the end. It really doesn't take very much masking fluid. And then I'll paint a little bit around a few of the edges of the, the flower, the areas that are going to be highlighted in the end. Now I'm just working slowly. I'm just painting water around the edges of my flower. So when I put in my background, it'll just be kind of a wet on wet technique. Because I've pre-wet that paint won't bleed into my flower. And I'm using a little bit of a small brush here because I want to get around that detail of the flower. Once I've wet that the background, I'm just going in with my Prussian blue very pretty blue. What I like about it, it's a deeper blue, but it also has a vibrancy to it. Just working around the edges to begin with. You can kind of see where I've, I put the water because that blue just kind of bleeds out. It just spreads softly. Pre-wetting that background also allows us more time to work with the background by wetting it down and then using a very watery blue. I'm going to have time to work with this, add in a few more colors, a little more detail, and it just gives me more time to do what I need to do. I'm leaving a little bit of white gaps because I'm going to, we're going to be placing in some other colors to kind of have a soft focus background where it's going to look like we have soft focused flowers and leaves in the background. They'll just be very muted and very soft. It just kind of gives a hint of detail and interest in the background. And also in the end, it still allows our flower in the foreground to really pop out. Just adding in a little more depth and vibrancy. I'm just taking a tissue, I'm just tapping out a little bit of that blue. So when I add in my pink, it just spreads in there softly. I want this pink to be very watery. bringing in an olive green. We also want a lot of water in that. So we want it to spread. And you can just place these background flowers very organically. I didn't really have a rhyme or reason. I mean, I do think about composition, but because it really is a background, people aren't going to really notice it. It becomes part of the painting. It just becomes a soft muted background. 
At this point, I walked away for a little while. I let it dry. And now I'm just going to come in and work on my greens, on my leaves. Just pre-wetting my leaves. So I want to continue my wet on wet techniques. Mixing my olive green for my first layer. And as you can already see from my inspiration photo to the drawing that I have on my paper, I added some blossoms and some more leaves to give it more interest, a better composition. I liked my inspiration photo because of its crispness. You could really see the definition of the flowers, but it definitely lacked in the background. So this is where I just make it my own add in the things that I want to add in. So feel free to either copy the composition that I've set out here, or you can add or subtract whatever you want off of your painting and just make it your own painting. But that's what I like about inspiration photos is that they're there to inspire you, not necessarily to copy. I'm not going for a realistic look, so I don't have to worry about copying every single thing that I see. I'm just kind of taking it as a slight suggestion. I've mixed my olive green and a little bit of sap green. I just want to create a little of depth in these leaves while the leaves are still wet. I'm just going to continue to work on my leaves. Our leaves aren't going to have too much detail in them. We will build some more detail as we go, but we're going to kind of keep them less detailed because what we really want to be the star of our painting is our cherry blossoms. Putting in a little bit of moon glow onto my palette. This is a Daniel Smith color. It kind of granulates and it, as it dries, it has kind of a purpley gray, there's a little bit of blue in there, a little bit of green. So I really enjoy this color for the shadows. It just helps give more interest than just putting in a blue or a gray. I really like how it, it adds a lot of dimension into the shadows after it dries. going to tap in a little more of that sap green while my leaves are still wet. And then I'm going to let that dry using my hair dryer to kind of speed up the process so I can just get to those flowers. Some of my pencil is a little bit too dark for my liking so I'm just going in with my eraser and just softening those lines so when I go over with my paint they won't show through. I can still see them just slightly, so I have a little bit of a guideline there. So I'm just wetting the areas that I'm going to work with because continue to keep this soft. We want to pre-wet and just work on our wet on wet technique. I'm using my Quinacridone Rose. It's the only pink color I have. It's a pretty vibrant pink, so I'm going to just start with it very watery to keep it soft. And as we go, we'll build the color, but for now, I just want to keep it light and watery. I am looking at my inspiration photo, but like I said earlier, I'm not copying it. It's just kind of giving me an idea of where to put some shadows and put some color but in the end it's not going to be an exact replica to me copying just creates a level of stress that i don't need while i'm painting i just want to keep it calm and peaceful 
art of painting for me is very therapeutic and if my stress level is up on a painting I really walk away after I'm done feeling depleted and stressed and I really don't like that feeling so if you're a person who really wants to copy the inspiration photo and that's what's pleasing to you and you enjoy that I want you to approach this in a way that's your style, how your brain works, how your brain interprets what it sees. If what you interpret is less detail, I love seeing other artists and how soft their watercolor detail is. And I think, oh, I want to do that. And then when I start painting, my brain really struggles and I I have a very difficult time in the simplicity of watercolor. I am more of an illustrator and a, a person who draws, so to do the soft, light, watery, not very much detail type of painting is just a struggle for me. I almost have to work harder at making it looser, which doesn't necessarily make sense, but that's just how my brain works. And so as you're learning and creating your own style, it's kind of wonderful to see that my style is my style. And when you come away with your painting, chances are it's not going to look like mine, but it will look like yours. And I learned a lot of watercolor techniques from other artists on YouTube and love learning from other artists. But when I was done, my painting looked so much different than theirs, even though I thought I was copying. And then we start judging our paintings against other artists. And it's just the human nature that we do that. But I really want you, as you're learning, just to, to really embrace your style. And you'll find as you continue to paint and continue to learn, your style will change. What I did two years ago is very well, I shouldn't say very different, but it is different than what I did two years ago to what I'm doing now. And I love what I did two years ago. And I look at some of those paintings and think, how did I do that? I, don't, I know I painted it. And so sometimes it's hard to even recreate our own artwork. But just embrace how your brain interprets and how how you're learning and growing as you go. And just give yourself that freedom and just to to paint without the stress of, does my painting look like this other artist's painting? Well, I guess I felt a little bit chatty today. Um, I just mixed a little bit of my Azo yellow and my pink to make a little bit more of a coral color. It's gonna help give a little more definition between the areas and between the pinks. Just a nice little addition to have that coral in there. I'm using a fairly limited palette. I'm using my quinacridone rose, a little bit of moon glow, my sap green, olive green, my azo yellow medium, and my Prussian blue. And with those colors, I created all the other colors that I used in this painting. Sometimes it's just kind of nice to use a limited palette. You can remember a little bit more of like what colors you used. And I really enjoy mixing colors. There are a lot of times when I don't have to mix another color, I could just get a color out of the tube, but I enjoy mixing colors. And it also helps tie your painting together when you use some of the same colors in the background that you're using in the foreground. And when you're mixing your shadows using the colors that you're already using, it just helps unify the whole painting. I'm just going to continue working on my flowers, just building up the color. As the paint soaks in, it's a little bit lighter, so as it starts drying, I'm just adding in more color into the areas that are a little bit richer. I'm using my hair dryer to not only dry that layer, but I'm kind of warming up that masking fluid so it just rubs off really easily. I 
think the painting is already looking very pretty. I'm going to continue to take the watery moon glow and just continue to work on my shadows. I'm just working on the depth and dimension of our flower. Finally getting to the part of the painting where we get to work on the middle of the flower, work on the stamen. We're going to keep these very simple. There's not much detail in these. Just want that yellow to really pop out. I'm 
using a really small brush here. It's a really cool brush. It kind of curves at the end and it ha has a nice angle where you can really pinpoint where you want to paint. It's a Princeton Select Angle Spot Detailer. Don't use it very often, but it sure comes in handy for these small little details. I'm going to show you here at this point where your painting could be done, but I'm going to show you how you can take this to the next level. You can totally leave it exactly the way it is. I think it's beautiful, but I'm going to take my Micron 005 waterproof pen. It's very thin. I'm just going to come in and add a little more detail. It's going to help some areas pop. I'm not going to outline everything. I'm just taking a few little areas where I feel like the detail gets a little bit lost. This is the illustrative side of me that likes to add in this little bit of detail. For me and the clients that I sell to, they really love the pen portion of my paintings. It's some of their favorite paintings. So I just like to come in and add a little bit if you feel uncomfortable with doing this and it's not something that you enjoy, then totally leave it out. But I'm just going to show you the difference between finishing it off with just a little bit of pen or just leaving it as is. almost don't see the pen. You don't want it to be so dark that you go, wow, there's pen. It's just so light that you almost don't even notice that it's there. And here we have them side by side. The left side is with a little bit of pen and the right side is with no pen. They're both beautiful and vibrant. You decide which one you like the best and how you want your painting to look in the end. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, that you learned something new, and that now you want to give it a try.